Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about the 5 sleeper OP picks and builds that you should be abusing for some free LP. You should definitely know the popular OP picks and builds since they're all around social media, including our very own YouTube channel, but in this video we'll be looking at some of the lesser known builds and picks today. The first of these sleeper picks that we'll be looking at is Vayne Midlane. She's good in quite a few matchups mid lane, but the most important one in the current meta is Kassadin. Kassadin is one of the most disgusting champions at the moment, with both his pick and win rates being way higher than they should be. The thing is, Kassadin is meant to be a super hard scaling pick, but at the moment he gets through that lane too easily. On top of that, he scales way too quickly, and everybody knows by now that Crown of Shattered Queen is insanely broken, and few of any champions abuse it as well as Kassadin. The only real counterplay to him is just usually to CC him and blow him up before he can get off more than one of the rotation of his spells. But Crown's insane 75% damage reduction makes that nearly impossible. Okay, so why is Vayne the right counter to this beast? Well, a really common belief is that you can just lock in any AD champion and dumpster Kassadin, but that would be a dangerously wrong misconception. Kassadin just kind of destroys most of their melee champions, AD or not. He just has too much burst damage, and the on hit damage from his W really helps him win extended fights. Even if you do win the lane against him with some AD Assassin, he usually just outscales you pretty easily, since he can get pretty beefy thanks to him being able to itemize Crown, Zhonyas, and even Frozen Heart. As Vayne, you're able to constantly bully him in lane with a range auto attacks. To counter him, you just alter your build a bit, rushing Wood's End before your Mythic. This makes the lane a little bit more difficult for him, since you're going to be dealing way more damage than he's going to be doing to you. Laning phase aside, you'll never really have to worry about him outscaling you. Your true damage will make it so you can always melt him down in just a few seconds, regardless of how beefy he tries to get. Now, let's look at the build that you'll want. For your runes, you'll take Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Magic Resistance. For your items, you'll start with the Doran's Blade, then build Berserker's Grief, Wit's End, and Immortal Shield Bow. At this point, you'll want to grab Genzu's Rage Blade, then two situational items. Some good options are Phantom Dancer, Bloodthirster, Spirit Visage, and Randu and Zomen. Part of what makes Sleeper OP picks so successful is the fact that nobody plays them. Objectively speaking, they may not be better than or even as good as the most popular picks, but when your opponents don't really know how to play against them, you get that extra edge in the fight. But that alone isn't quite enough to win you all of your solo queue games. You also need the skills to have those early leads and know how to use those leads to win your games. And that's exactly what we're trying to teach you guys over at ProGuides.com. Our top tier coaches over there can really help you figure out exactly what you need to work on. They're available 24-7, so it's never really a bad time to come try one out. I promise, there's at least one that specializes in exactly what you're looking for. These guys have spent years reaching the top of the ladder, so why wouldn't you want to steal all their solo queue tips and tricks? All you have to do is click the link in the description. Now let's get back into the video. The second sleeper build that we have is a new build for Ezreal that makes him an even safer pick than the previous seasons. Ezreal is inherently a hard champion to pin down and kill, especially when it's a good player that really knows how to position and can constantly land keys to drop his ease cooldown to basically just a few seconds. But even when you play him perfectly, there are games where there are champions like Zed or Vi who just have a point and click gap closer that you can't really avoid no matter what. The common way to deal with AD threats on Ezreal is to grab Frozen Heart later down in the line. This can definitely help, but against a fed enough assassin, they'll likely still be able to one-shot you with a full combo. Now, enter Crown of the Shattered Queen. Like I said before, getting onto Ezreal is a pretty difficult target to actually get onto in fights. It usually takes someone with high range, point and click gap closing, or a flash ultimate from somebody like Annie to blow him up to actually kill him at the start of the fight. But when you actually throw a crown on Ezreal, you turn the chances of your opponents being able to catch you from slim to none. Even if one of those aforementioned threats do manage to get onto you, so what? Now you'll survive their opening burst and you'll be able to kite away afterwards. You can even take this build a step further. Say that enemy Zed is insanely fed and even with the 1.5 seconds of damage reduction, his ultimate pop is still a threat. Well, now throw Azanias onto the build as well and you'll become immortal. Now let's take a look at what the build will fully look like. Free runes run First Strike, Magical Footwear, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Presence of Mind, and Legend Bloodline. The set runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. For your items to start with the Doran's Blade, pick up an early tier and then build Essence Reaver, Mana Mune, and Lucidity Boots. With that done, you'll get the star of this build, Crown of the Shattered Queen. The last two item slots are situational. Like I said before, Zhonyas is great if you need even more defense, as is Frozen Heart. If you want more damage, go for Sorelda's Grudge and Ravenous Hydra. Our next build is yet another Marksman, this time looking at the OP combo First Strike and Lethality on Misfortune. First Strike as the rune is pretty solid, but it's not something that anybody can just abuse. The key to using it is being able to, well, land the first strike on your opponent before they can hit you and put it on cooldown. With a huge range and instant damage on Misfortune's E, this is extremely easy to achieve. Once you activate your Keystone, try to land a Q off the minions to maximize your profit. Aside from that little combo in lane, there's one big reason that we like the pairing of First Strike and Lethality. 
Misfortune's ultimate really does a lot of damage with the standard crit build, but when you do the lethality build, it melts people even faster. Then factor in first strike's bonus damage, and you can kill anybody that can't immediately get out of bullet time's cone of death. So in team fights, your job is to simply press E and R, preferably after your team lands a little bit of AoE CC. Let's look at the build that you'll be running. Free runes take first strike, magical footwear, biscuits, cosmic insight, presence of mind, and bloodline, with the set runes being attack speed, adaptive force, and armor. For your items, start with the Doran's Blade, then build into Eclipse, Lucidity Boots, or Boots of Swiftness, and Axiom Arc. Since this build is focused around your E plus R combo, Axiom Arc's ultimate refund passive ensures that you always have that crucial ability ready in case your team goes for those back to back team fights. Anyways, once your core is done, you'll go for Yuma's Ghost Blade, Sorelda's Grudge, and either Edge of Night or Black Cleaver. Now, let's take a look at a new Orn build that not enough people are abusing yet. No, it's not anything crazy like Bruiser or Full AP. It's still a tank build with just a little bit of a switch up of what we normally see. The key difference is that this build includes Winter's Approach, and you rush it before you get your Mythic. Winter's Approach and its upgrade, Fimble Winter, was pretty hyped up before the preseason hit, but surprisingly, we don't really see it too often, and I don't really get why. Tanks generally lack sustain, so having a shield for trading gives you a way to not lose a long-term battle against other champions that either have healing built in or can itemize for it. Since Fimble Winter gives shields on slows, Orin can proc it anytime with Q, since you basically have to try to miss that ability. Now let's take a look at the build as a whole. There are actually two different rune pages depending on what you're laning against. For melee opponents run grass with undying, demolish, conditioning or bone plating, overgrowth or unflinching, magical footwear, and cosmic insight, with the stat runes being attack speed and either double armor or double magic resist. For ranged opponents, you'll want to run Glacial Augment, Magical Footwear, Biscuits, Approach Velocity, Conditioning or Second Wind, and Unflinching, with the set runes being Ability Haste and either Double Armor or Double Magic Resistance. For your items, you'll start with the Refillable Potion, and then use your passive to create Adorned Shield, ASAP, and Lane. Next, use your passive again to immediately craft Terror of the Goddess once you have another 400 gold. After that, you'll upgrade to Winter's Approach, and then build into your Seal Cast and Frostfire Gauntlet. Against an AD opponent, your next item will be Thornmail and then Randuins and Warmox. Against an AP opponent, you should go for Force of Nature over Thornmail. Like I said, Winter's Approach slash Fimble Winter really seem to be heavily undervalued at the moment, while some other things are being super, super overrated. And don't get me wrong, I think Axiom Mark is strong, but only on the right champions. I don't think that you should build it on Karthus. I really don't. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What new item or rune do you think is the most OP? Let us know your choice and why down in the comments below. And finishing off our list, we have something that kind of stinks, Skarner Top. Skarner is a champion that seems to always have a high win rate, but even in his more meta role as a jungler, you almost never see him. And I can't even remember the last time I've seen Skarner Top lane, but when it does get played, it's an incredibly strong pick. Skarner's trading power is surprisingly overwhelming. His Q doesn't hit too hard, but it's super spammable. So over the course of a several second trade, he gets a lot of damage off with it. His W allows him to soak up a lot of damage from your opponent, while his E allows you to stick to them. Since Garner is rarely seen, most people will underestimate your combat strength, which can very often result in solo kills going your way, especially if they fight you near your tower post 6. We have two different builds to look at that give you different gameplay options depending on the type of player that you are. The first build looks like what you'd see on any standard tank. If you go this route, you'd be a strong sidelaner, and you'll also be able to serve as a frontliner in teamfights. For your runes, run Grasp, Shield Bash, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Biscuits, and Approach Velocity, with the set runes being Ability Haste and Double Armor or Double Magic Resist. For your items, start with the Dorn Shield, pick up an early tier and the build into Lucidity Boots, Frostfire Gauntlet, and Winter's Approach. After that, go for Thornmail, Deadman's Plane, either Frozen Heart or Force of Nature. If you want more combat strength, especially against other tanks and juggernauts, you can go for Divine Sunderer over Frostfire as your Mythic. The second build that we'll be looking at is purely aimed at being a team player. The runes for that are Phase Rush, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Conditioning, and Overgrowth, with the set runes being Ability Haste and Double Armor or Double Magic Resist. For the items, you'll start with the Dorn Shield, buy in early tiers, and then build into Lucidity Boots, Even Shroud, and Winter's Approach. After that, buy Dead Men's Plate, Anathema's Chains, and either Frozen Heart or Gargoyle's Stone Plate. As you can see, this build is all about going for that one target with your ultimate so your team can blow them up. If it's really hard to reach a high priority target, you can always just go for Chem Tank as your Mythic instead. And that wraps things up for our OP sleeper builds that you're missing out on for patch 11.24. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you sub so you never miss out on our meta guides and you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know what new item or rune that you feel is most OP down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can go ahead and discuss League further or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.